out. So what we're going to be doing here, as I say, is trying to sell limited cards so that I then can make some money here to then fund the rare team. And I've already got a couple of players up for sale. I've already got a couple of players up for sale. Um, I've not really had any interest. I've even got rare, rare players up for sale as well, right? So Dario Dumich, technically we could keep here uh, because we could start to use him in the rare rebuild. But I also bought him for £3. And there's an opportunity here for, for me to make more than three times. In fact, more than five or six times what I paid for him. Can you warn the stream about the scammers currently in Serare? Like the, like the large trade scams? Yeah, we've, we've, we have warned before. Um, I'm just going to say again, because it's a good reminder there. Guys, I can't say it enough. Honestly, I can't stress it enough. So whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing and listen up to this for the next minute, okay? Because it's really important and I want everybody to um, pay attention to it because I don't want you guys who are following me and joining these streams and, you know, following the content, supporting the content. I don't want to hear from anyone else on the stream that they have fallen foul of this really horrible scam that's happening on Sorare at the moment. Um, Basically, the scam is that you will get an offer from a manager in Sorare, and it might be an offer where it's Ether plus loads of cards, right? And so you might not like the offer. You might then counter the offer. But the same cards that were, um, you might be happy with the cards that they want to buy off you, and but you might just want a bit more Ether, right? So then you counter that offer to try and get more Ether. Then you have another counter back. Then you counter back. So you have this like rounds of countering back and forth, right? And then as the, uh, the buyer, so the scammer, is edging closer towards the valuation of what you'd probably be happy to accept, at the very last moment, they then change out one of the cards um, that you've been negotiating on, and then they then switch in one of your big hitting cards. So they might switch in, say, like a huge uh, player, like a, like a Haaland, if you had a Haaland, or... They might switch in a goalkeeper, for example. But because you've been going back and forth, countering on the same cards, you won't have actually, you might not have actually checked uh, at the last uh, offer, the last counter offer, to see whether there has been any changes. Because in the previous three rounds of counter offering, there's been no changes to the cards. And this is a deliberate tactic that scammers are doing because they are preying on managers who are not uh, paying attention to a small change that happens right at the end of the, uh, of the round of counter-offering. So guys, what I'm saying here is do not use counter-offers. I cannot make that any more clearer. Do not use counter-offers under any circumstances right now because you just don't want to put yourself in a position where you're countering with somebody and then at the last moment, then at the last moment, you are not checking um, the um, the, the changes because the way it works in Sorare right now is that the, the game does not alert you to any changes that have been made in, in counter offers. It doesn't tell, it doesn't highlight the changes. It doesn't say that there's been a significant change from the last counter offer. It doesn't tell you that there's been a change in the values of the counter offers at all. So it's on the owner, it's on you guys as a seller to be checking um, every single counter offer, what has changed. And it does need to change in the game so that the game makes it a bit clearer and easier and gives more safeguards to sellers so that they don't fall foul of scammers doing this because it's happening deliberately now and I've been pushing for this for months and I honestly don't know why we don't have, um, we don't have more safeguards in place at all. I'd like to hear something from Surreal on this actually. So even if they are, don't have a fix in place that they can launch this week, I would love for Surreal to come out, address the community and say, we've heard what's going on with this and we are actively working on putting a fix in place. We've not heard anything back from Sorare, which kind of frustrates me a little bit more because there are people out there that are getting scammed for their cards. Um, and you can say, yeah, that it's, it's all on the, the, the user, right? As in, they should be checking. I don't agree with that. Of course, the, the users do have to take a little bit of responsibility because you have to always be making sure that you're checking like manually to see what uh, changes have been made, but it's very easy. It's very easy to do. Well, you're going back and forth, and if the system doesn't alert you to it, then the system does need to be better at just safeguarding and protecting uh, sellers' interests a bit more, and also just the interests of the game. Because with this happening more and more, 
uh, what it's going to do is it's going to massively turn off and it's going to send people to leave the game, unfortunately, um, if there are no protections put in place soon. Because what's going to happen is, especially if, the, if this happens to a new joiner to the game, new joiners to the games, uh, to this game, are going to think, oh my God, like I've been completely scammed out of my card here. When technically they kind of haven't, but yes, they have, uh, because there's not enough safeguards in place in the game. And then they'll be, probably just be so put off by that they could then just leave the game because they've had such an awful experience. And then what happens is they go around and they tell everyone, oh, I kind of got like my card basically stolen off me um, in Sorare. So then Sorare starts to develop, unfortunately, that reputation, that very unwanted reputation of don't sign up to Sorare because that could be a place where you could get your card stolen and there's scams running riot on the, on the platform. So Sorare really need to put a fix in place, I think, to this week um, so that they can just nip it in the bud really quickly. And they also need to come out, I think, with some comms to say, we've seen what's been going on with this and we're on the case. At the moment, I've not seen or heard anything from Sorare. And um, I don't, we don't know whether there's going to be a fix coming um, to address this to because it's an exploit in the game. They just need to put an update in to fix this because it's happening too often. So guys, um, I'm just going to say it once again. Do not use counteroffers. You see that I never use counteroffers. Because there are a few exploits actually with counteroffers, and the one that I've just explained is one of the exploits. There are a few more exploits that you can do in counteroffers, um, which are not good. They're just not good. So do not use counteroffers, guys, under any circumstances. If you don't like the offer that you get, reject it. Just reject it. And then just like wait until you get an offer that is closer to what you would want to accept. But do not be getting involved in counteroffers. If you do do counteroffers, then you are leaving yourselves open right now and vulnerable to potentially having one of your cards um, taken from you when you didn't realize it, right? As in, you might have a card included in a counteroffer that you have just missed basically from the previous rounds of negotiations because it was not part of the negotiations from the first and second and third rounds of counteroffing back and forth. So just to be safe, guys, do not use counteroffers until Sarah put a fix in place to address these exploits, guys. What competitions are you going to be focusing on next season? So it's a good question that from uh, Daz Darren. Daz Darren Daz. So the reason we're selling our limiteds here, we are still going to have limiteds, by the way. We're just going to have a lot lower or a lot fewer um, limited cards or limited uh, teams. But the competitions that I'm going to be building for now are rare uh, Cap 240 and then rare Cap 220. So we're going to have two rare teams to start with. And then we're probably going to have about, I don't know, maybe about five limited teams. I think at the moment we've got around um, something like 15, 15 or so limited teams, maybe. That's, that's, probably, that's probably not correct. We've got about 10, actually. We've got about 10 limited teams. I think we need to reduce that down by at least half. So Miguel Acosta is up as well. All right, that's good. I think we might move it on soon in a minute. Who else can we just kind of get up here? Pitcher, we could get up. I think we will get Pitcher up, actually. I love this guy. I think he's great. We picked him up for 60p. We can sell him for three times the value. Let's do it. Benedict Pitchler. Yeah, we know that that's cancelled. Let's close a lot of these down as well. It's getting a bit too confusing at the top here. Too many, um, too many tabs turning up here. Uh, I'm in the same boat as you, but doing rare 240 and rare kickoff. I want to do uh, rare two division, but means giving up rare kickoff. Give up rare kickoff. Don't waste your time in rare kickoff. Daz, at all. Rare kickoff is the most trash competition in the game. It, as, as far as I'm concerned, I feel like kickoff needs to be binned. But if they don't bin it, they need to refresh the price point. It. There's no point playing rare kickoff. It makes more sense to play. Um, cap 220 than it does to play rare kickoff. The prize pool in rare kickoff is not worth it at all. And given the fact that you can, um, so I'm going to show you how, how trash rare kickoff is, right? I'm going to show you because technically if you were, let's say it, I'm not sure if you are new, right? But let's just assume that like you were new to the game and you're looking to kind of like progress through the game. The kickoff competitions have been labeled 
as those step-up competitions in the game, right? So that you maybe you play like the amateurs, then you kind of start to progress to say semi-pros, then pros, and then you want to start dipping more into the rares, but you can't actually afford um, at the moment to start buying loads of rares, right? So you think, okay, the kickoff is that nice stepping stone. So I only need one rare card, and then it allows me then to potentially start to win rewards that will get me more rare cards to start building a rare team. But that's not the case at all. The kickoffs don't serve the purpose which I think they are supposed to, because the kickoffs are supposed to ease you into rares and then hopefully give you that ob ability, that opportunity to start getting more rares, right? Or at least being able to afford to uh, go out and buy more rares. But it's just not the case, because if you look at this here, right? Where's kickoff rare? Here we go. Kickoff rare, right? There's five rare cards. Now, this is for the upcoming game week, right? So it's a little bit skewed because it's a midweek game week, right? So it's a midweek game week. That means that there's going to be less games that uh, are going to be available. And if there's less games to be played, the prize pools are lower. But this kickoff rare makes no sense to enter when you have to finish in the top five, right? To win one of the rare cards here. There's no other prizes in here. There's no ether. There's nothing. There's no extra cards. You have to finish in the top five to win a rare card, right? And there are 189 uh, entrants here. 189. You've basically got no chance to win that, realistically. You've got too low a chance. It makes no sense to enter kickoff rare or any of the rare competitions. Now, what they need to add in kickoff rare are either more rare cards that you can win, so up the prize pool, or they ideally need to not do that and start throwing in some ether. Because if you can start to win ether by finishing in certain positions in kickoff rare, then it's at least going to allow managers to start to progress higher up in the scarcities. I don't understand at the moment why you can you can earn ether in the training teams, but you can't earn ether in a kickoff uh, in a kickoff competition to help you progress in the game. It's, it's, it's bizarre. Um, I, I know why. So the training team ethers in there to kind of appease the the whales, right? So that then the whales can actually uh, start earning some more ether. But realistically, this, this is not good enough to be entering competitions in at all. And if you consider this, right, let's take this as an example. Let's say that you, you want to play kickoff rare, right? So there's five cards here. There's 189 managers, right? And when you're playing competitions in Sarai, you need to be looking at the reward price pool versus the amount of entrance. And you need to be, as a general rule of thumb, you need to be entering teams into competitions and entering them hard, right? So in like throwing in some of your better players, when there is a 10% or higher chance for you to win a card at a basic level. And if you do a basic uh, calculation here, if there's five rare cards, then technically there needs to be no more than 50 um, entrants here to then give yourselves a 10% chance of winning one of those five cards. The fact that it's 189 kind of says to you then you've got basically less than a 3% chance, right? Maybe 2.5, something like that. It's ridiculous. Now, if you look at the cap 220, right, what you'll see is that there are 29 rare cards here, right? And there's 375 um, entrants. So again, going by the 10% ratio here, that technically should be 290, which means that this itself is a little bit crowded based on the prize pool. However, you've got a significantly better chance to win those 29 in the cap 20 rare than you do have playing in kickoff rare. And with the, the, kick, the, the cap 20, yes, you do need uh, four rare cards and then you can play one limited and the kickoff is the reverse. So in the kickoff, you have to play one rare and then, th and then four limiteds, but it's so worth playing uh, cap 220 over kickoff. It's not worth playing kickoff at all until the prize pools get better. Look at this, right? Look at this. The kickoff super rare, you can win three, only three super rare cards, right? Only three. Now, there are only 27 that are entering right now, but there are, there's still a lot of time left for the game week to start. So you would expect this to be over 30, uh, maybe even 40, potentially even 50, right? By the time it gets to the start of the game week. But there's only three. You have to finish in the top three. 
So you can just see the kickoffs throughout all the scarcities just are not very um, attractive for their prize pools and not very rewarding at all. And I, I've been saying this to everyone, avoid the kickoffs. Do not play kickoffs at all. The only time that you should be playing kickoffs is if you literally have leftovers. So you've prioritized all your stronger, better players in the other competitions, but then you can enter still another lineup of five players. And it's basically all the players that have been left over that you don't really want to be playing most of the time, or maybe they just have really horrible fixtures. Just then play them in kickoff, right? So it's a competition at the moment where you should just be only playing your throwaway teams, as in teams that you really don't care if they don't win anything, um, and try and put together all your players in a kickoff that you think could potentially score badly, because then you can collect all the bad scores in kickoff rather than having, say, players that get the bad scores. I tell you what he's good for, right? With his L15 being 40, um, this is a guy that's probably way better for cap 220. Because when he does hit high, he hits quite high. As in like he can get scores of 70, mid 70s. And that's very good for someone who has an L15 of 40. So potentially someone I come back to, right? Oh my God. So Stefan Odoi's list price right now is £90. There's only 21 rare cards of him. This guy is actually pretty decent, Stefan Odoi. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's playing in the Danish Superliga. There's no limited cards whatsoever. There's only 21 rares. How much has he actually been going for recently? I do like him. We might want to actually have a little look at him on a football manager as well, I think. Quite curious to see what he's. Um, 20 days ago, he went in a trade. Uh, what? What kind of trade is that? What? What am I missing here? So, hold on a minute. So, is this... Rav. So Rav basically bought. No, surely not. Surely not. God, look at that. His value used to be two hundred sixty-two pounds about a year ago. It's now two pounds sixty-one. That looks suspicious, doesn't it? We've got a card here, a rare card that's been swapped for a limited card of Eric Sviatchenko. And look at the valuation that day, five pounds. The only ether that was sent was one pound 67. What the hell? How does that work? Wow. That doesn't seem right to me at all. That does not seem right whatsoever. I mean, I mean, look, um, Rock Dynasty. Rock Dynasty's basically um, got an amazing deal here. Because Rock Dynasty is basically sent £1.67 and then Eric Sviatchenko. And he's ended up getting a rare card of Stephen Ador. Oh, Joseph Efford. Ooh, hold on. Joseph Efford's decent. What's going on with Joseph Efford? He's also still 26. Yeah, effort's decent. Okay, contract uh, up until May. So technically he's left, right? He's got a thigh muscle rupture until June. That's fine. That's the end of this month. We would be interested in this type of player for sure. Because he's got a fairly decent record. Quite like him. 
What's uh, what's the news on him then? I own one first owner card. Of who? Of what? Of effort? A lot of contracts expiring for fringe and key players at the end of the season. Who should stay and who should go? And we can see efforts here. So it's a bit up in the air, right? About what's going to happen with Joseph Efford. But I quite like him as a player, Joseph Efford. We definitely need to think about him. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be someone that I would be interested in. We're not going to spend £20 on him. But I think we do need to add him in. We're not in a position to actually kind of put an offer out, I don't think, for him. But that's someone that I would be interested in for next season. Same with Innes Cameron. Apart from Innes Cameron's not really getting a lot of game time. He probably needs to go out on a loan, doesn't he, Innes Cameron? Because I like him as a player. I think he's decent. Um, it's just his level of scoring's not been great so far. But for Kilmarnock, he's got four goals in 42. He didn't really play a lot for them last season. He played 13 appearances, really. He's had a lot of loans so far, right? So he's, he's actually from Kilmarnock. He's a, a Kilmarnock Academy graduate, youth product, but he needs to go out on a loan, I think. I'm going to add him because I would be interested to see what happens with him. Um, so we're looking good on Pookie, but if you don't know what this is, this is a Web3 sports prediction platform, uh, a game, which I play now and I love and I think it's super fun. And the ROI on it, I can't stress this enough. And I'm, I am I almost feel like maybe um, it's not uh, sinking in for some managers. So I'll, I'll say it again. The ROI on this game is brilliant at the moment because you only need to finish in the top 50% of the league that you enter to win some Matic, which is basically the uh, Ether equivalent of cryptocurrency on the on the Polygon blockchain. So similar to Serare, when you um, when you win some threshold, you get an Ether amount, and then that Ether amount is a fiat value, which is five dollars, right? On Pookie, if you finish in the top fifty percent of a leaderboard, uh, you're going to win some of that Matic, some of that crypto. And I've been earning quite a bit so far. I've been playing for the past month and it's been a real nice earner for me so far. And um, we've been covering this all so far this week and we're going to be covering it on every single stream that we do now. So it's going to be a regular fixture on the stream. I'm going to show you um, how we're doing at the moment. So this is the live game week, right, guys? Match day four. There were 420 entrants in match day four in the USA League because this is the USA League that I, I, I predicted games in, and I predicted 10 games in. We're currently sitting 24th out of 420. That is a boom. That is a big boom. So we are 24th right now. If we click into it, um, we've still got one game left to play, which is the St. Louis City versus Galaxy game. And we predicted that 3-1. Now I'm telling you guys, if that ends up being 3-1, we're going to get 365 points and that is going to massively boost us up this leaderboard. Right now, you can see that there's our ranking 24th. The first place has got 1,500 points. So even if we get uh, the correct score here, we're not going to be able to get a podium. We're not going to get the top three because uh, the third place has 1,331 and we've already got at the moment, 965 points, right? Just take it back here so you guys can see it. There you go. 967, then plus 365. It's just not going to be enough, right, to beat this. However, what we could do is we could probably get into the um, we could probably get into the top 10, I think. And um, I think we want we want to have a, a proper good go. Look, at, this is how easy it is, right? We've only got we predicted 10 games, right, in the MLS from this weekend. We've only got one correct score. Only one. And it was actually, look at that. We spent a lot of time talking about this game, didn't we, guys? The 
Vancouver Whitecaps versus Cincinnati. I think a few of you guys were saying, no, nah, you definitely feel like Cincinnati will win this game. And I was like, no, I really thought it would be a draw, but a low score draw. We got it perfect. 1-1, we absolutely nailed it. That's the only correct score that we've got here. And we are sitting 24th in the global leaderboard. So if you think that you need to be getting perfect correct scores here in order to win rewards on Pookie, absolutely not. You will probably need them later on. So as this game grows and as more and more people start to play it, you are probably going to need to get way more correct score predictions. Almost the same what happened with Serer, right? Where as Serer's grown, it's becoming harder and harder to place higher up the leaderboards, right? And this is a game, Pookie, that's only been really running for the past six months or so, right? And so it's still in its infancy. There's not a huge amount of players that are playing it right now, which means that it's a perfect opportunity to place high up in the leaderboards, start earning that uh, crypto of Matic, right? And then start using that to go and buy bigger and better Pookie pools. So basically, guys, this is the time to get a early start advantage in this type of game. And... We've got one correct score. We are sitting 24th. Let's go through all our predictions here, right? We predicted that Montreal would win 2-1. They ended up winning 4-0. So a huge overperformance from them based on our prediction. We get 127.4 points, right? Why do we get 127.4 points? We didn't get the correct score of 2-1. The reason we get 127.4 points is because we correctly predicted that the home team, Montreal, would win, which they did. And we also correctly predicted that there would be over 2.5 goals. We said 2-1, that's over 2.5 goals. The score was 4-0, that's over 2.5 goals. So that's why we get boosted points, because with our Pokeball that we use in this particular prediction, our Pokeball, which was our rare Pokeball, let me just bring that up for you on the screen right now so you can see it. Because we have several different Pokeballs, and this is the aim of the game in Pookie. You need to be collecting these Pokeballs, right? And every Pokeball is different. They're different in terms of how they look. There's different scarcities to the Pokeballs. So the higher scarcity are the more powerful Pokeballs. And they also have different um, prediction boosts as well, prediction attributes. So if we click on this one here, this is our rare Pokeball. This is our highest scarcity Pokeball that we picked up on Thursday because there was a brand new drop. If we click on it, what you can see is that we have uh, several different attributes here and the percentages are different for them. So the home win outcome gives us a boost of 16%, right? Over 2.5 outcome, so over 2.5 goals gives us again a huge boost of 16%. The correct score gives us 16% too, but we didn't get the correct score right in this a particular fixture we only got the home and the correct score but that was enough to give us 127.4 points right which is pretty good really good uh you are even 17th in the non-boosted leaderboard free tip scout yeah we are I'll, I'll explain that in a bit more as well but we are doing really well so we get 127.4 points right because we used our rare pokeball which is our most powerful pokeball and we needed to pick that up on on thursday because we wanted to have a proper good go now at trying to place even higher up in these leaderboards. That's why we went out and we spent about $80 buying this Pokeball because we expect this Pokeball to push us further up the leaderboards so we can then start to earn even more cryptocurrency to then pay back the cost of this Pokeball so that then we can play this game essentially for free and then just make a lot of um, crypto every single game week. So. Let's go back here. We said 2-1, it was 4-0. We get a nice amount of points though. We said in this game here, and I remember we spoke about this a lot, right? On the streams from last week. Who remembers this game actually? I think there was a, quite, a few, quite a few of you guys in the chat saying, do I really expect um, Charlotte to score two goals or for Seattle Sounders to concede two goals against Charlotte? And do you remember what I said? I said, trust me, when Charlotte play at home, they are, they are monsters. They're a different team entirely. They are a dangerous team at home, as in like they're one of the, the best teams at home in the MLS. They will easily score two goals against um, Seattle Sounders. 
And not only did they score two goals, they scored three goals. And I said that their games when they play at home have a tendency to get really crazy. Now, I expected, based on our research from last week, I expected that this game would be a high scoring draw game. And it was. We went for 2 2, and the score was 3 3. So we were actually spot on, really, with how we were analysing this game. The only difference is we obviously just got it wrong by one goal each side. Um, Because 3 3, I really didn't expect it to go 3 3. I thought 2 2 could be the max here. But the fact is, even though we did not get the correct score right here, we correctly predicted that it was going to be a draw, right? And we correctly predicted that it was going to be over 2.5 goals. And again, we used our rare Pokeball here to do that. So if we have a look at the, the boost that we get, we then got an additional 10% of our scoring because we got the draw outcome right. And then it was over 2.5 again. So we then get another 16% added to our, our total here. Really, really cool. And what you'll see, guys, we can go through the rest of this, right, really quickly. What you're going to see, and this is the key takeaway here, guys, so please listen up to this, right? In order for you to be successful in Pookie, what you have to do is you have to consistently get boosted points, right? So earn points in every single game. If you can earn points in every single game, even if you don't get the correct score, because we've only got one correct score here, if you can basically get these smiley faces in every single game, you are going to easily finish in the top 50% of the leaderboard and you are most likely going to finish at the high end of the leaderboard to then give yourselves the best chance of getting the very best rewards. So you basically need to get these smiley faces on all the... How can I grind and get two prices in Pookie? Um, you have to play the free-to-play basic league and you have to um, finish in the top five. And to be honest with you, the free-to-play is very much like the amateurs in Serare, where you're, not, you're most likely not going to win, right? Because the prize pool is so low and it's so difficult to finish in the positions you need to win that prize pool, right? Because the, um, the free-to-play league, I'm just going to show you it, right? The basic league, it's a great way to introduce you to the game, right? It's not a great competition to be grinding to try and um, try and win a Pokeball that will then give you access to the Pro Leagues. The better way to do it is to just simply buy a common Pokeball. The common Pokeballs are $20 and honestly, they're super cheap because then it allows you to start playing in the Pro Leagues. And then when you're in the Pro Leagues, you can start earning crypto and you can earn that crypto back for your Puki uh, within, a, within a month, basically, if you're a really good predictor. So you can see here, this is the basic league, right? Every week there is a basic league and every game week, um, you can predict up to four games, right? You can see the prize pool. This here, this black um, kind of icon here, this means that there are five Pokeballs. So in each match day, there are up to five Pokeballs to be won. There's no crypto. You cannot win any crypto in these basic leagues. The only way to earn crypto is to play in the pro leagues, right? And the pro leagues are every single other league here apart from the free to play basic league. And in order for you to play in the pro leagues, you need to have a Pokeball. So this basic league is a, um, a low chance, but it's still a chance opportunity for you to win a Pokeball. And if you finish in the top five, you win a Pokeball. That's basically like your ticket, your entry ticket to then go and play the pro leagues. However, what you can see is that similar to the amateurs on Serare, right? The entrants compared to the prize pools are so, um, so what's the word I'm looking for? They're so different, right? There's such a big gap. So there's 1,740 players, right? That are playing in this live game week. There's only five rewards that are worth winning. Only five. The, the, the odds of you getting into the top five in the pro le in the basic league are so low, right? So it's a really good um, league to start understanding and getting used to how the game works. It's not a league that you, you should be playing in for the long term because it's just worth, it's, it's worth more if you go out and you buy a Pokeball and then you play in the pro leagues. You can see here, look, 
I actually only played three match days, right? In the basic league. I played three match days in the basic league, right? This was when I first joined the game. I finished 588th. Then I played the second match day. I finished 1040th, right? Out of 2,373. Then the last one, I finished 987th. And by the third match day, I was like, okay, I get how this works now. And I quite like it. But I can tell by playing the basic league by the third match day that I definitely need to get a Pokeball. Because there's no point playing in this to, to basically win nothing, right? I get how it works. It's introduced me to the game. But I'm not going to be able to realistically grind a Pokeball when there are so many entrants here every single match day. And there's only five Pokeballs. So it's almost like a tutorial league, this one. You play it for a few match days, you get used to it. And then you buy a Pokeball, which costs about $20 uh, as a minimum, kind of as the lowest entry. And then you can start to earn some crypto by playing. Guys, thank you so much for your time here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you for all the support on the channel, including the subs. We'll be back again tomorrow at 12 p.m. UK time. Where we'll be looking at the Monday midweek planning. So we'll be looking ahead to the midweek in Surrey. Um, so the game week, which starts on Tuesday. And we'll be looking at, again, the opportunities for the best matchups, the best players to target. Um, and we'll also do some scouting as well a little bit around trying to rebuild my rare team. Plus, uh, we'll also be coming back to Pookie because we will start to get an early head start on predicting uh, the games for the next match date in Pookie. So guys, thank you so much. Um, you've been great.